the EEPROM 9. Yeah, my hair's wet, I've just been in the shower. Forgot my hair dryer too, decided to try and not wash my hair today. It's not comfortable, so I started doing that again. <laughs> anyway, that's not the subject of today. Du -du -du -du. It's this. This is a Plesley control transponder. For those of you who don't know what a control transponder, which I didn't when I looked at this, or could it be made in 83? God knows. It's basically a thingy that was invented in World War II for the use of radar in that it would broadcast a code that would allow the radar operators to know if your plane was friend or foe. So basically you had a set number of codes for friends. Now personally this is all British. RAF. On the back we don't have much apart on the sides and top and that and it used, looks like it used to belong to a museum. Not anymore. And more stuff to do with the museum. We have two connection points which will lead it into the rest of the plane, probably to the radio to some sort of radio transmitter. And of course the front panel with a nice, nice, lovely, proper switches. I wish they still put switches like this on stuff. Look at that, beautiful. None of that software control bullshit. And this one which is stuck in the middle. Should I have that one or zero? Let's have it on one. There we go, sorted. Now I haven't opened this up and I couldn't be bothered with doing an unboxing because that's just like, yeah, now I've done enough of them for a while. So let's see what's inside this thing, but I'm not really sure what to expect. Will there be some sort of small computer? Or will it consist of a really clever array of 7-4 logic? Well, let's find out. Excellent, fits the screwdriver. And bearing in mind it's built for planes means it's built to a high quality of standards, so it should be quite impressive what's in here. A bit like that other like gin thing that I picked up, that really cool piece of test equipment, I've forgotten what it's called now. So we undo the screw. So once again, let's screw some test equipment. I think that should be my new catch rate or something. Well, it's not new. Screwing. I like screwing. I love screwing electronics. Ah. Now people with dirty minds connotate that into some sort of amusing thing that makes them chuckle, basically. Why not? Everyone should be able to enjoy. Let's lift the cover. Now that is weird. But all the good stuff looks like it's on the other side. <laughs> We've just got the arse end of the board. So we have our selection switches and of course the control panel stuff. So let's have a look at the underneath stuff. We've got some PCBs. And it looks like we've got some ICs in here too. It's hard to tell from here. But it is certainly unexpected. And what a lovely control. Look at this neat wiring. I wish I could wire up this neat. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Nice big old cap. And the smell of musty military. <laughs> Let's turn it over and have a look under this side. I was expecting to see the circuits pointing up at me. It's a bit more empty than I expected it to be. I expected it would be like chock of full of cards or something. So we pop this on one. Pulling things to bits is so much fun learning how things work. Although I will put this back together and then this can go on my display shelf looking pretty. Looking pretty. Good old aeroplane equipment. I always find this sort of technology fascinating. Ooh, this has got something holding it. Oh, it's got screws over there, that's why. I get a view of the board, but it's not a very good one. It's hard to tell, really. Oh, 
There we go, that's right, screw. Pop that one. Oh god, my bloody hair's getting in my face. My feet are really soft. They always are when I come out of the shower, though. Ta da! Oh yes, we've got integration in here alright, and quite a lot. Huh! It's just like layered. Oh, look at that wire wrapping. See, this is all the beautiful stuff. Hmm. This actually looks like 70s era, looking at it, but that's just a guess, but. I've gotten good at guessing. <laughs> That's lovely. I do not recognise any of them part numbers. They're obviously all custom. 27, 14, ah, oh, 27, 6, 0, 16. Oh, hang on. Yes, they are reputable companies, but they're just in weird packages. We got date codes on them, um, not really, no. 71, 27, 14, 27, no. That's beautiful. That is utterly beautiful. Wire wrap at the back. There's about three cards here worth of all this stuff three of these large cards then you got another card here which will probably be of a similar construct hmm it might just be possible to get these cards out and have a look at them shall we do that Oh, sorry about the silence, but I'm just concentrating on, on screwing my little device. Ah. Oh, oh, that's nice. That is very nice. This is how stuff should be designed. Ah, oh, we've got labelling of some kind. I don't understand any of it. It's all like the wire wrap where they twist it on and hold it on. Trouble is, without any date code, I'm not sure when it gets. 6915. Oh, this can't be from the 60s, can it? Oh, God. That seems way too old, Plesley. 7115. 7115. 7012. This is 1970s and early 70s at that. Finally, some date codes. And it all uses stamp, and with it being like 71, well, that means 74 logic. That was a bloody good guess. You have to give me that, don't you? That was a bloody good guess. Will it be all that, or will it be? something more. It's 1970s! That is utterly awesome. And then underneath it's more of the same basically and then underneath that, well I can't see. It'd be quite good to get one of them mini like camera things. Mm. I'm not going to go for removing the side panels because uh, I don't really know how to. I won't. There's, well, there's some bolts holding them in and they're held in at the front and all that and it the uh, I don't want to destroy this device, it's too cool. Bloody from the early seventies. Huh. Well that is awesome. I hope you enjoyed that view into some really, really old kit.
thanks for watching.